Uh, basically this, we're all born, most people would agree, we're born unrighteous, and religion says if you get baptized as a baby, that it immediately infuses to you a state of grace, and you're kind of on level ground, headed toward God. But, you know, babies and toddlers and teenagers and adults sin. They're called venial sins in religion. And then if you're contrite and confess and, you know, cooperate with, you know, the sacraments, you're still bouncing along with the required righteousness to get you to heaven. So the goal is heaven. So we're born not headed to heaven, but religion says an experience or whatever, uh, most often a baptism, will get you up to okay, and then you have to keep dealing with sins. Now, a mortal sin, boom, puts you right back. You're at zero. You're, you know, bad. Headed toward, you know, a long time getting rid of the sin. This is purgatory down here. This is a purgation. But if you, you know, do penance and, and have purchased indulgences, uh, do, you know, reparative acts, merit, and good works, you can keep working. And some people work really hard, but basically there's a shortfall between what's required for heaven and where they end up, even if they, you know, only venially sin. And that gap sends them, the shortfall sends them down here. By default, they go to purgatory at death. So when life ends, Religion says most people won't make it good enough, so they've got to make the final payments down here or have their family purchase indulgences, pay for religious you know, kindness and deeds and prayers and candles to get them out of there and get them to heaven. So that's basically religion. And the gospel of religion and merit is this, born a sinner, baptism washes and gives us a fresh start, Venial sins can be dealt with by confession, penance, merits, and good works. Mortal sins put you back to start, and you have longer purging. At death, only saints go to heaven. Boy, that's the first thing in this chart that's true. That's what the Bible says. At death, only saints go to heaven. The question is, who are saints? And that's really the question. The rest go to purgatory. Uh, there, the time to purge is shortened by indulgences. That's what Martin Luther protested. Then they get to go to heaven. So that's the gospel of religion and merit, which is not, not, doesn't sound very good. It sounds like a lot of purgatory. How religion says good people, as in saints, make it to heaven. Uh, you ever wondered about Mother Teresa, for example? She was born in unrighteousness. She was baptized. She came up here. She continued and confessed, but she began to have excess merit. And what religion does says that this excess God puts into a treasury. She exceeded somewhere in life the required righteousness to get to heaven, and all her excess is donated down here for all those poor souls that aren't saints. That's what a saint is. And if the Roman church canonizes them, the Roman church examines their life, and they say they exceeded the required righteousness to get to heaven. Their excess goes in the pool. At death, they go to heaven, and the pool is used for all the people back here that uh, need to get out of purgatory, okay? So that's what religion says, the good people happen. But what happens to everyone who's not canonized as a saint by religion? Well, at death, uh, they need purging and purging and purging, and family members are called upon to do masses so that they can finally get the required righteousness to finally get to heaven. And the worse they were, the more purging is needed. But what's God's simple plan of salvation? This is what it says in the Bible. 2 Corinthians 5.21. Could be the single most important verse in the whole Bible if you had to kind of take all 31,000 verses and only keep one? It says this, for he, that's God, has made him, that's Jesus Christ, to become sin 
for us. So Jesus didn't sin, he became sin. That means he took it on himself. That means here is me, and all my sins go on Jesus so that the righteousness of God might be mine through him. Jesus' perfect life is exchanged and put on me, and my sin is put on him. So Jesus treated, was treated by God as if he had lied, cheated, stolen, been proud, been lustful and wicked like me. And God treated him like he did all that. And God treats me like I have the righteousness of Christ, which is the instant that exchange takes place, I became a saint and didn't even need to be canonized. And so did every one of you that let the simple plan of salvation be yours by faith. So when we come back next time, this is the drawing by uh, our wonderful um, elder that likes to draw things. At conversion, we go from unrighteousness, the way we were born, through faith and repentance to perfect righteousness, which the Bible calls justification. I was declared righteous in Christ, but my life doesn't quite match up to God's declaration, and so God works with me all the way through life And there's always a shortfall. We always fall short of the glory of God. But Jesus, once and for all, paid the price. Even though I never perfectly act Christ-like, because I trusted in Christ's work and he imputed to me Christ's righteousness, God is going to make me become, and it's called glorification. Let me just erase this, get back. That word right there is the key. I have been justified freely by his grace through the redemptions in Christ, so God perfects me when I get to heaven. But I'm never free of sin here on earth. That's how the Bible teaches salvation, and when we come back uh, next time, we'll see that. But Matthew 7, 13 says that life is like one of two roads, two trees, two relationships. There's the wide and the narrow. Which road are you on? I mean, that's what the kids were singing about tonight. Are you headed to the Father's house above? Do you know that Jesus is making a room? You have reservations? Or are your sins piling up that you're trying to pay for and you never get them quite paid for? And someday God's going to say, you didn't take my free gift, cast him in the lake of fire. That is the difference between religion and revelation. 